A great source of confusion that I faced as a young science student came from my inability to make the connection between how these nucleotide bases were actually related to the structure of DNA and how that was related to the structure of chromosomes. I'd learned from my many biology teachers that DNA contains the information that codes for all of our physical traits. I had also learned that through meiosis these traits are passed on with recombination to reproductive cells and that through mitosis they are passed on to duplicating cells during eukaryotic cell division. All through the division of chromosomes. What I lacked however was the ability to see the connection between chromosomes and DNA. Do chromosomes contain DNA? I wondered. Is DNA located somewhere else in the cell, or is it in the chromosome, and if so, where? Now, to help reduce this confusion for you, I've assembled a few slides that you'll hopefully find illuminating. As you can see in this figure, purines and pyrimidines, hydrogen bond. So right here, I have adenine and thymine, and down here, I've got guanine and cytosine. Once again, these purine and pyrimidine pairs match up in the hydrogen bond in the complementary way shown here. Now in DNA, each purine and pyrimidine base is attached at carbon 1, you see the C1 prime here, to a 5 atomed ring sugar, as shown here. These sugars are all bound together in a strand by a phosphate backbone. So this little circle here is representing the phosphate backbone. Thus, we could say that each DNA strand, here's a strand to the right, and here's a strand to the left, consists of nucleotide bases that are linked together by a sugar phosphate backbone bound to C1 of the nucleotide base. The two DNA strands, then, have complementary base pairing, adenine hydrogen bonding to thymine and guanine hydrogen bonding to cytosine. Now if we zoom out in perspective, this sugar phosphate backbone looks kind of like this. A twisting pink ribbon with colored shapes representing the complementary nucleotide base pairs in between. This twisting ribbon structure is DNA. Now our cells package DNA by wrapping it around special proteins called histones which act kind of like a wheel that we might use to wrap our garden hose around at home. These histones, in turn, are clustered together in groups called nucleosomes, which are then wrapped around in a larger structure shown here, which is called chromatin fiber. Chromatin fiber, which is made up once again of numerous histone clusters wrapped up with DNA, then coils to form the chromosome superstructure shown here. So this is a summary of how packaged DNA really does make up the larger chromosome structure. As you may remember from biology, human somatic cells, non-reproductive cells, contain 46 chromosomes, while our reproductive cells, sperms and eggs, contain 23 chromosomes. One question you might ask is, how are our individual cells able to find a specific sequence of DNA in all of this mass, and then unravel it? and use it to make a specific protein right when they need it? That is an amazingly cool question. But I won't give you the answer until I teach you biochemistry during a later semester. Sorry. Now, the DNA Learning Center, the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory in Laurel Hollow, New York, has produced a series of incredibly useful videos for teaching molecular genetics. I find one particular video of theirs to be most instructive for our current subject, how a chromosome structure actually relates to the individual sequence of nucleotide bases in our DNA. Now, I've posted the HTML here for you to examine later at your leisure. However, I'm going to show it to you right now just so that you can see it. Now, if we look at this video, you'll see these little white cylinders are complementary nucleotide bases, and they're being twisted around by this pink phosphate backbone. This giant purple blob here is a histone. These histones are being twisted around to, uh, to form these uh, larger histone groups uh, around which the DNA has been wrapped. These then coil around to form chromatin, and the larger chromatin supercoils 
are twisted around and eventually wrap around and around and around until they constitute the chromosome superstructure. You'll see that uh, being depicted here in the video, and I think it's supremely cool. And these chromosomes are what we actually see in a microscope when we're looking at a cell. As always, I conclude our video presentation with the promise that we'll see and have to do numerous synthesis examples together during our in-class problem sets. I look forward to seeing you then. And now I finish this lecture and this chapter by quoting from Dr. Seuss's classic book, One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. My hat is old. My teeth are gold. I have a bird I like to hold. My shoe is off. My foot is cold. My shoe is off. My foot is cold. I have a bird I like to hold. My hat is old. My teeth are gold. And now my story is all told. Barbara Streisand.